Good morning, folks. We've got a full slate of topics to discuss today, and episode 21 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle comes out in a few hours, with one of the biggest surprises of the entire series. Let's begin right now at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star with little but the dark coronal hole turning through. There are no active regions or sunspots facing Earth, but two CMEs and a coronal hole stream are due to impact our planet, and the first one, a faint wave, has indeed arrived. It was sparse but magnetically different enough to overcome the weak telemetry of the stream, pushing the KP up a bit to just below instability range, and on the magnetometer, it is also clear that the smooth curves have been interrupted as we take the spike down. That was almost certainly the first CME. We've got another on the way and the coronal hole stream as well, whose most intense portion is still about two days away. Let's go next to the weather. Brazil is flooding. Sao Paulo has been inundated and the death toll is rising along with the record of damage to the city. Much of their expected rainfall in the entire month just came down in 24 hours. In the southwest Indian Ocean, we see the cyclone slowly on approach to Mozambique at the African coastline there. That is going to be a major event at landfall. And in the United States, here's a little 48-hour forecast that shows the snowstorms and cold waves set to continue shattering those records here towards the second half of March. And on the leading edge, however, is also the potential for major storms along the line ahead and leading the edge of that cell there. The U.S. climate report for February is out. Pretty cold there, and this is our maximum temperature charts for last month. I also went ahead and pulled the combined January and February numbers to get a look at the year so far. We know March has seen more cold and snow records drop and more is coming right now. Interesting paper that appears to discover a new historical solar blast. This event, which they say happened around 660 BCE, would have been on par with the Carrington event or larger, like the Charlemagne event in the 700s. So the great known solar events of the last 2000 years are here. Just as sunspots have a quasi 11 year cycle, super flares likely have one much, much longer. Now grit your teeth as we pull up Harvard's latest attempt to convince everyone geoengineering is okay. Here they claim that they can spray the sky and not cause the catastrophic climate effects that are now fairly well understood to be possible if they play God up there. Captain Chemtrail David Keith, of course, makes his obligatory appearance in the article as well. Jackals. Interesting study has discovered the closest pair of high-mass close-orbiting binary star formations we know. That is quite a record to hold in the vastness of the cosmos, certainly worth a note. But worth more than a note is the continued release of an electric sun material, this one from an AGU book, describing the fields and currents found within the sunspot and how their setup is determined by the dominant electromagnetic forces in the active region, and how those currents get active during solar flare events. This is critical because whether it's something setting off the sun to micronova or a sun diving comet triggering a small CME, that's how this all works, and all the energy needed for the visualized dynamo are present at the top layers. Folks, the bombshells for the Catastrophe Cycle series just keep coming, and you are ready to forget about Chan Thomas, I bet. Subscribe, click the notification bell, whatever you have to do, come back in a few hours for episode 21 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.